Healthy from the inside out. This is Valley Well by a Salud, a health and wellness information program brought to you by ValleyWise Health and District Medical Group. Each week, we go in depth with different healthcare experts on some of your top health questions, getting answers to help you live your best life. Hello and welcome to Valley Well Valle Salud. I'm your host, Lauren Vargas. When you think of the term healthcare, a hospital might come to mind, but most healthcare is actually done in an outpatient setting, also called ambulatory care. So that means any consultation, procedure, treatment, or service that doesn't include an overnight stay in a medical facility. So today we're taking a deeper dive into the importance of outpatient care and how you can make the most of your next doctor's appointment. Joining us to discuss is Dr. Carol Jean Elnicki. She's a district medical group physician at Valleywise Community Health Center, North Phoenix, which opens November 2nd. Located at 19th Avenue in Northern, this state-of-the-art facility will offer primary and specialty care, pharmacy, lab, imaging services, behavioral health, and more. Dr. Elnicki, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. I was kind of reading your bio and you sound like you have a very interesting past. Well, my family's been in Phoenix area since 1985. So I was a junior high schooler when I moved here and my parents still live in the same house they moved to back then. I, though, decided after school, I went to medical school at Wake Forest University and joined the Air Force and spent 21 years on active duty, had a great time seeing the world. I spent about seven years in Japan, was stationed in Turkey, did a tour in Afghanistan. So I thoroughly enjoyed that experience. I served as a physician. And then two years ago, when I retired, I moved home. I've got parents and two sisters and niece, nephew in the valley. So I'm enjoying being back home. Well, we're happy to have you back. Thank you so much for your service. So do you treat patients of all ages at this point? I do. So I'm a family practice doctor. So yes, we focus on both wellness and then preventive health, seeing the typical sicknesses of, and I see newborns, I see children right after they leave the hospital. I think my next patient that I'll see today is about eight days old. And I have several patients in their nineties. Wow. So that certainly keeps you on your toes, I'm sure. It does, but it's a lot of fun. And again, we are a family practice group. So we see families and we get to know people across generations and how life develops for them and how just family dynamics come into play with people's health and wellness. Excellent. So today's topic is pretty general, generic, but if you could kind of explain to us what outpatient or ambulatory care means. Well, as you said, it's the care that happens outside a hospital. And honestly, it's how most of us interact with the healthcare system now. Hopefully, for most of us, hospitals are rare events in our life. It's focusing on wellness, on managing chronic conditions so that we don't need to be at hospital visits. In these days with coronavirus, it means it's much easier to have family-involved care, but it is in America where the bulk of healthcare happens. And for most of our listeners, they're going to think back to the last few times they've seen a doctor. It was probably in a clinic. It probably wasn't in a hospital. And why is that important to keep people out of hospitals and more toward preventive care? Well, for one thing, it uses resources wisely. Hospital resources are very valuable, but if you don't need them, you're more comfortable at home, you're recovering better at home, you're sleeping better at home. So again, focusing on prevention care, on wellness, on doing things that allow you to stay a part of your family and community and involved is the best way to deliver health care. Absolutely. Definitely more convenient and probably more affordable um, outpatient care. Mm -hmm. So that's for individuals. What about as a community? Why is it important to keep our society healthy with outpatient care? Again, that allows people to be productive in their lives as parents, students, co-workers to be able to do that regularly. It is also cost effective for our care. And again, tackling problems before they spread is the thing to do. 
If you're just tuning in with us, we're talking with District Medical Group physician, Dr. Carol Jean L. Nicky, about the importance of outpatient care and how to have a successful doctor's appointment. Dr. L. Nicky will be working at the new Valley Wise Community Health Center, North Phoenix, which opens November 2nd. And you can make an appointment with Dr. L. Nicky or any of our district medical group providers by calling 833-855-9973, Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., or you can visit valleywisehealth.org and click the book appointment button. So we're talking about how outpatient care is becoming the preference for most people to stay out of a hospital and, you know, visit their primary care doctor or their specialty care doctor. You've been in medicine a long time. You said you served in the Air Force as a physician. Now you're back here. How has family medicine changed since you became a doctor? That's a really interesting question because certainly there's some new therapies and those are exciting things. But the heart of what family medicine does is it's a there's a doctor, there's a patient, their family, and it's knowing that patient and focusing on the best health outcomes for them. And so I think that's been the same throughout my career, that that's our most important focus in family medicine. What's your favorite part about your job? I think getting to know people, getting to know their stories, understanding their background, getting to know people again across generations. I mean, it's not unusual as a family practice doctor that you can have three generations of people. And not always as you think of like parents and young children, like sometimes I have the daughter who's taking care of her mother who's now in her 80s and dealing with some of those issues that play into everybody's health together. So I really enjoy getting to know people and knowing all those different factors that affect their health and wellness. That's excellent. And what about some of the things that have surprised you? So when you were going through school and now that you became a doctor, some things that you didn't really think of that have, you know, are a big part of your job now. That's a question, I guess it's surprising. Okay. That's a good question. I don't know that there's much that surprised me about patient care because again, I think family medicine is really what we think of as we want our doctor to be as you think back and you know, even back to doctors and horse and buggy days that this person was in the community, this person knew patients, this person was available for patients for whatever they knew. That's what I anticipated doing and that's what I do. I think probably learning to manage my own wellness has probably been the thing I didn't anticipate having as much challenge with. But to try to do that as a role model and to stay healthy myself, I think it has surprised me how much effort that took. Well, I'm, thank you for your honesty. That, um, that makes a lot of sense. Now, certainly COVID-19 has changed a lot of how uh, doctor's offices work. What, what are some of the changes you've seen and have been implemented since the pandemic? There's been a lot of emphasis on doing telehealth appointments or where you can either use the phone or use a secure video app and talk with your doctor about whatever the problem may be. We weren't doing that at all before coronavirus. And now that's probably about 30% of what I do when the numbers were higher in Arizona that percentage was even higher. But it is great because it allows high-risk people to stay home. We're also learning that for some people who are you know, busy with their job or it's difficult to take time off, that there are some things that can be done very well over a video call. So I think that's a change that we're going to probably see long-term in medicine. Absolutely. I know I did it for the first time this year. I've done two or three telehealth visits, and I've been very pleasantly surprised with the whole experience. Everything was very efficient. I felt like there was almost no difference because most of it is a conversation, like you said, a relationship with your doctor and explaining what's going on rather than the touching of the body and feeling. That's probably a minimal part of your job. Yes, absolutely. So 
when there's technology involved, obviously there's going to be a learning curve. So, you know, I'm not a computer whiz. I was able to figure it out, but there's probably some bumps along the road. What are some tips you can give our listeners to have a good telehealth visit if they've got one coming up? I think the first thing with any visit is be prepared. You know, think over what you want to talk about and even write yourself some notes about what's really important to me to cover during this visit. Have your medications near the phone where you're able to look at them and make sure that the doctor can review with you exactly what you're taking. It is really hard to say the names of a lot of medications and just having them handy where you can spell it out to us if it's really hard to say, that's tremendously helpful. If you use any medical equipment, like you check your sugar with a glucose meter, or you have a home blood pressure cuff that you're following up your own pressures at home, bring those near the phone so that you can read your last few sugars or your last few blood pressure readings. That also is really helpful. Dr. Carol Jean Elnicki with District Medical Group is talking to us about the importance of outpatient care and how to have a really good doctor's appointment. She'll be working at the new Valley Wise Community Health Center, North Phoenix, which opens November 2nd. It's located at 19th Avenue and Northern and offers primary and specialty care, pharmacy, lab, imaging, behavioral health, and more. You can make an appointment with Dr. Elnicki or any of our providers by calling 833-855-9973. Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., or you can visit valleywisehealth.org anytime and click the book appointment button. We're talking about how to have a, a great telehealth appointment, but you said it's only about 30%, so 70% of your patients are still coming into the office. Is that correct? That's correct right now. Okay. So, so let's talk about doctor's appointments in general. You know, for me, I, I always go in there and I've got a lot to talk about and I seem to forget some stuff. So things, you know, I get in there and then I, I walk away like, oh, shoot, I forgot to ask my doctor about this, that, and this. So let's talk about how people can have a good doctor's appointment in general. What are some good questions to come in armed with so that you get, you know, the answers you're looking for? I think it's important to keep track of your own medical history and medications. And for some of us, as things get more complicated, it's just good to even keep a written record so that you don't have to keep that all in your own memory. Again, it's always important to bring your medications to an appointment. Um, and then to have, just make sure you answer the specific questions. What is my problem today? What do I need to do about it? When do we need to check back up on it? You should always leave the office knowing those questions. And if you don't ask those specific questions. And always be honest. There's, you know, no reason not yes. to be honest with your doctor. There's no shame or embarrassment or anything. No. Things that are said here are confidential, and I can assure you in 21 years, I've heard a variety of things from a variety of family situations. Again, we can't help you unless you tell us. We are happy to help. Excellent. I want to introduce Chencho Flores. He's our audio producer for Valleywell Valle Salud, and he has some questions for you. Hi, Dr. Hi, <laughs> um, so my first question is um, going back to, to being prepared and knowing. Um, we have all of the information in the world at our fingertips right now. Is it um, a detriment sometimes when patients go right to WebMD or Google and you look stuff up and then you go into your doctor's office and say, well, this is what I saw. Um, is, that, is that a problem on your end? Sometimes it is, but by the same token, there are some websites that do provide tremendous health information and can help people or sometimes just give them confidence to bring things up. You know that there's a name for this problem or other people talk about this. So it is important if you're going to use a health website that you make sure it's one that's reliable. You know, please don't go to Facebook and you don't know who you're getting advice from with Facebook, but there are some that have been looked at very well. And 
that are great sources of information that I refer my patients to and that sometimes my patients will print up information. I will say too, though, it's often good to kind of go in with an open mind and to start a discussion with it. It seems like, I know from my experience, um, I've looked up some symptoms of something I've had and I've said, well, that's it, I, I, I'm, I'm dying. Um, but it's it obviously not the case, usually not the case. Right, and again, but that's why bring it into us, let's talk about it together. You know, rather than sitting home and trying to diagnose and treat yourself, are you calling me up and saying, I'm sure I've got this. Can you give me this medication? Again, bring it to me. Let's talk through it together. Awesome. Thank you. So when, when a doctor does prescribe someone a medication, what are some good questions that the patient should ask about the medications? I'm guessing, you know, side effects and how to take it and... The most important thing is to know why I'm taking this medication. It's very interesting to me when some of my patients are on multiple medications and they take them as scheduled and do a great job, but they don't know which one's for what. And it's really helpful to know, is this for my blood pressure, for my cholesterol? Is this an antibiotic? I'll only be on briefly. So the, it's important to know what this is for when to take it. Do you need it with food, not with food? Does it interact with something else that you're taking so you need to move it to a different time? How long will you need to take it? And then yes, side effects are another important thing. If you're just joining us, we're talking with Dr. Carol Jean L. Nicky about the importance of ambulatory care and how to have a successful doctor's appointment. You can make an appointment with Dr. L. Nicky or another provider by calling 833-855-9973 Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit valleywisehealth.org and click the book appointment button. So you mentioned you see generations of, of families, people of all ages, newborn, elderly. Talk about the difference between those appointments. I'm sure they're, they're very different appointments from a newborn to, you know, a senior. Yes. Um, with children, there's a huge importance on a wellness focus, on getting immunizations, on development, making sure a child's learning, making their speech milestones, making sure that all of their self-help, learning to button their own clothes and things are going. And sometimes, especially if it's your first child, you're not really sure. And maybe your neighbor's child is doing something you expect your child to do. And it's like, no, that's very unusual for a two-year-old to actually do. Of course, it's tougher with kids because they don't have as many words to tell us what's going on with them. Then you get toward adolescents who are becoming much more independent and sometimes are less open with their parents and sometimes with their doctors than both parents and doctors would like them to be and trying to build a relationship of trust there with both the parent and the teenager. We get into younger adults who often come in less, they're in a very healthy time of their life, but often have some issues, especially family planning at that age is an important issue that should always be bring, we should be bringing up, either pregnancy prevention or preparing for a healthy pregnancy, depending on what stage of life you're in. And then as we get into our middle ages, unfortunately, some of these chronic diseases do start coming up. Our high blood pressure, our diabetes, those things become more common and we're thinking about keeping healthy into our senior years. And then with many of my seniors, I'm talking more about things that keep them in their own home. Are they falling? How well do they sleep? So talk about what um, a doctor's appointment would be like for a senior citizen. Well, as a senior citizen, there's two common types that you should have is your regular visits that you need for management of your chronic conditions. And then there is a visit that's called a Medicare well visit that's looking at things very comprehensively. Do you see specialists? What specialists do you see? Do I have the name of every other doctor that you're seeing so I can coordinate and oversee that care? It focuses on making sure that your vision and hearing are still good so that you can continue to have good functioning with your family 
family and in the community. It also focuses on what we call activities of daily living, some of the advanced activities of daily living. Some of our seniors are starting to have issues with driving, with going places, with driving at night, balancing their own checkbook. So talking to people about how that's going in their daily life, what sources of help do they need, who's available to help them, hooking them up with community resources to help them. That's excellent. And for people who are older or may no longer drive um, with COVID, can they bring someone to the appointment with them, even if they just stay in the waiting room? At this point, we are having some people come, yes. Some people need to bring that person back with them for help with communication potentially and to bring one person if that's your need, yes. Um, that person also, you know, can wait in the vehicle with you absolutely or in the in a vehicle and yes okay so there's definitely but options it is definitely important to continue to get the health care you need even during coronavirus unfortunately you know this is a situation that will be going on for probably at least the next year in our community and it is very important to keep up with other health conditions so that if you do get coronavirus you're as healthy as you can possibly be and so that we do take care of your wellness needs and manage your chronic illnesses so they don't get worse absolutely and i was going to ask you about that because you know i'm kind of in the lower to middle stage of all those stages you were mentioning and i to be honest, I only call my doctor when I need something, you know, when I'm feeling sick or whatever. I, do, I don't do those annual checkups anymore. Is that something that adults, you know, healthy adults should do to see their doctor every year, even if there's no issue per se? No, not all adults necessarily do, but it is important to think very honestly about your own health risks. Again, as you get into young adulthood, there are some issues with your lifestyle that you may need help with. Quitting smoking, losing weight, planning for a healthy pregnancy. So it's very important to keep up. You don't just need to go when you're sick. You do need to think, what's going to affect me in 10 years? Am I managing that now? And as you go to see your doctor, that is another good question. When do I need to come back and see you? Sometimes Sometimes we can base that on there's a specific screening health test, you know, because of your family history with diabetes, you should be getting checked in another couple of years. Your blood pressure is borderline, you should be following up in three months. Your next pap smear is due. So that's a great question to actually ask your doctor. But no, as adults, we don't go just because the calendar changes. Some of us need to go more often to manage our conditions. Some of us maybe can go less often often, but it's important to have that as a conversation with your doctor. And by the, whenever you leave from a visit, you should definitely be knowing, when do I need to follow up with you? Absolutely. Well, I'm glad you said that. It makes me feel a little less guilty for not doing my annual wellness check. Um, so to, to conclude, we've talked about a lot today, and thank you so much. So my last question is, what do you wish more people knew about their relationship with their doctor? I think I wish more people just would say, we need you. We need you to be open with us in conversation. We need you to tell us what medications you take, what other doctors you see. None of this is going to offend us or worry us or shock us. But we do want to help and we can't help unless we know. So the more information you can give us, the better we can help you. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, we covered a lot of information today about the importance of ambulatory care, how to have a good telehealth or in-person visit with your doctor. We will have a blog on valleywisehealth.org right now, so you can check that out and read about everything we talked about today. And Dr. Elnicki, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Lauren. We hope you enjoyed listening to Valley Well Via Salute, a health and wellness information program brought to you by Valleywise Health and District Medical Group. 
If you're looking for more information about what you've heard today, visit us online at valleywisehealth.org slash be well. There you'll find blogs and videos from our healthcare providers, and you can even book an appointment at a Valleywise Community Health Center near you. That's valleywisehealth.org slash be well. Thanks for listening, and we hope you'll tune in again soon.